Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode. So, we've just exited Kakadu National Park. We're on our way to Darwin. On the side of the road, Miranda noticed that there was a Wikicamps app um, point of interest. And there's this Japanese artist who's done some carvings in the granite, trying to illustrate the importance of um, conserving wild rice varieties for stable food production. Um, <clears throat> so, we just gone and had a look. I'm gonna set the drone up, look at it from up there because it's quite a large um, carving. And then after here, we're heading straight to the jumping croc boat tour. Is that what it's called, Cam? Yeah. Yeah, so this episode, Darwin, six nights, we're on our way to the jumping crocs. So let's get into it, guys. We're just waiting to board the um, death machine. Yeah. <laughs> and Miranda's just spotted some crocs. There's three of them. Uh, yeah, in there. they're actually flowing with the river. We can see the ripples going faster than the flow of the river because the boat's actually just started up. The skipper's in there. He's just just turned it on, and we reckon that the crocs know that means it's feeding time. Yeah, just about there somewhere. Hello, Marilyn. Marilyn. <laughs> 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 now, as I was saying, these uh, saltwater crocodiles, inverted commas, probably better to know what they have proper name Indo Pacific or estuarine crocodiles. They are the largest, most aggressive, and most widespread of the crocodilian family. Uh, Stumpy uh, is an interesting fellow in a few regards. He's one of the few crocodiles that we work with that we have a fairly good idea of his age. Uh, we estimate Stumpy to be between 70 to 90 years old. They can live to over a hundred years. The birds we're trying to get down at the moment are the whistling kites and black kites. Uh, they're the most numerous raptor in the top end. Uh, they've got a couple of very special adaptions. Uh, the first one being they can eat on the wing or on the fly. Now this is very unique in raptor world. With all your other raptors, your owls, eagles, falcons, hawks, they all have to land to eat. Uh, not the kites, they can eat while they're flying. So if you're watching closely, he'll grab that bit of food with his talons, straight up to the beak while he's flying. As I said, very unique in raptor world. And it turns up the nickname bully birds up here. Because they will bully other birds into dropping their catch or their kill. They'll pick it up because they can eat while they're flying. They've got the edge of the competition, so it's pretty good skill. Alrighty. Big Four Howard Springs Caravan Park, just outside of Darwin. This is us for the next six nights. We've been off grid for, oh geez, I can't even remember now, a couple of weeks away from caravan parks, and the kids are super duper excited. Um, because there's swimming pools and, and all that sort of stuff, right? Jumping pillows. Miranda's just in the um, reception now and the kids went running in. So it's no secret. <laughs> I like the more off-grid stuff, natural settings, but the caravan parks do obviously have their advantages. We be hooking up to uh, water and power and we've got a, quite a lot of clothes and sheets and towels that need washing, so. This will be our base of operations, I suppose you could say. Oh, 
Oh, and know? a stripper show. What? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, hang on. I have to revise what I was about to say. <laughs> I was just about to say that the kids aren't the only ones excited about being at the caravan park because mm. Marina's just seen on that side bingo night. Bingo. Well, at the Howard Springs Tavern. But so there's also stripper show and, and toppy night and <laughs> T-bone steak night free entry. So Tuesday I get a night out, Wednesday you get a night I'm out. I'm coming with daddy. <laughs> when in Darwin you got to do what the Darwinians do. <laughs> Showgirls night. Well, I always complain about caravan parks, but Miranda's pretty stoked, and I've got to admit, this is a pretty nice shady spot. Yeah, the lady was so helpful. Yeah. She um, she was like, if you're not happy with your site, come back. I mean, why wouldn't we be happy with yeah. this? It's beautiful. Right across from the splash pool, amenities. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And no mm -hmm. one else is in this block. Yeah, no one's here. We're all here by ourselves. Yeah. The whole park is full of caravans. I was, we were driving around, I was thinking, oh God, it's so busy. No one's at this location. It's all us. We're the only ones here. Like Miranda said, splash pool, amenities, showers, toilets, uh, laundry, and we've got loads of laundry to do. <laughs> hey. Yep. Lots. Yeah. It's pretty good, eh, hey, Jacqueline? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Are, Are you going to give the uh, splash pool a go? The yeah. splash park? Yeah. They're actually working on it. They're fixing it at the moment. There's um, a couple of men over there doing some repairs. And I'm sure you and Cammy will be over there, eh? And just like that, we're all set up. Batteries on charge, water tanks full, two loads of washing done, high speed internet, and the kids have had lunch and they're enjoying the water park. This reminds me of being back at home. <laughs> it's so windy. Pretty windy. Yeah. Today we're doing the full tourist thing today. Right now we're going to the Royal Flying Doctor Service headquarters. Uh, and then we're going to do the World War II underground oil storage tunnels. We're doing a virtual, what is it? A virtual reality the of bombing. the Darwin bombing. Because Darwin was bombed by the Japanese in World War II. Which is quite an extensive campaign because all the uh, American warships were using this as one of their, um, what would you call it, ports, one of their staging posts for World War II. Anyway, like I said, full tourist day today. Yeah. Lots of history for the kids. Yeah, they're going to love it. <laughs> they're going to be begging us for a swim in the pool later on in the camp, uh, caravan park. <laughs> William B. Preston on February 19th, 1942, Willie B. received a direct hit, just floored up the after deck house right in an ammunition rack. I lost 14 of my men with that single bomb. The ability to fly above turbulence and longer distances. Larger cabins and integrated medical fit-outs have greatly improved the level of patient care we can deliver, as well as the comfort and safety of both patients and flight crews. I am waiting. No, this is a doctor's plane, isn't it? It's not a fighter pilot plane. 
No, I was just being silly. <laughs> so if you're a pilot, look at all these dials and buttons. You'd have to know what they do. What do they do? I have no idea because I'm not a pilot. Hey Camo, what did you think of that Royal Flying Doctor service and bombing of Darwin that's experience pretty, that we did? That's pretty cool. Yeah. So Darwin was bombed 64 times. Which is way more than I thought. I thought it was. But that particular day, 274 people or 270 something people died, 300 odd injured. Yeah. Yeah, and Darwin was just laid to ruins. Oh, but it was. Great little, um, a great little experience. Royal Flying Doctor Service Headquarters of Darwin. Learn about the history. Also, the interactive experience of the, uh, the bombing. Now we're going to the tunnel, underground tunnels. Yeah, Cam, this is one of the um, one of the tunnels for the for the fuel storage. After Darwin was bombed, they created these tunnels to house fuel. Pretty cool when you think about it. Like a nearby um, oil storage facility was bombed, and then like the following year, they started building tunnels to store fuel and oil in secret. So. In case they get bombed again, hopefully they don't bomb the fuel storage. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Little bit of a disaster though, wasn't it? Yeah, so the tunnels were never really used as they were intended. Cost blowouts, leakages, collapses. Um, yeah, so good idea in theory but never really panned out. And then uh, peace was declared only, what, three years later after the tunnel's construction. So they're never really used. And it cost them, you know, millions and millions and millions and millions of pounds back then. No, it was 850,000 pounds, which is equivalent to $73 million now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm misread. Yeah, it was meant to be 220,000 pounds and then it blew out. Yep. Yeah. Leakages, breakages, dangerous working conditions. <laughs> anyway, that's a good little tourist attraction there. So this was kept secret. I was reading one of the yeah, things. 1992. Yeah, it's kept secret. No one knew about it until the 50th anniversary of the bombing of Darwin. And then they opened it up to the public to come and have a look. Very cool. Alrighty, were you reading that back there? Mm -hmm. So Fog Dam was built in the 1950s as part of a, uh, a water catchment area for irrigation for, um, for rice fields basically. And it attracted so much bird life that ultimately that irrigation scheme and the rice fields failed. But by the time it had failed, it had become like a, a dry season sanctuary for all the water birds. So, I think it was saying in 1959 it was designated a bird protection area and then in 1982 a conservation area um, or conservation park so loads of bird life here we're here just outside the wet season so we should be able to see a bunch of uh, migrating wildlife birds and it's home to two very distinct water animals a water rat which are eaten by the water pythons. The water pythons. How cool is that going to be if we get to see some water pythons? Yeah. So anyway, it's a part of the Adelaide River um, wetlands catchment area. The Adelaide River is the, <coughs> the river we did the crop tour on a couple of days ago. Bunch of different little walks you can do. Um, there was a wetlands walk, there was a, a rainforest walk. And then you can actually drive across, it looks like you can drive straight across the uh, the dam wall to a lookout when you get a view over the entire dam. Camo's got his 
binoculars, going to do some bird watching. Miranda, no doubt, is going to be doing snake watching. You looking forward to it, Jacqueline? All right. Let's see what we can get up to. So I've got to say, I'm used to the kids complaining on walks like this, but we have a new contender. Oh, the mozzies are horrendous. They <laughs> are pretty bad. <laughs> it's different, eh? Like, you, you go walking along this boardwalk and you, you're walking through, um, like, paper barks and then you come to, like, a big open grass area and then you come to an area that's full of lilies. Yeah. There's all sorts going on here. Like, what are these things? Are these... These are lilies, aren't they? Yeah. Wow. Still haven't seen any pythons. Good. Hey, Cameron, Jacqueline. Yeah. So, you know all these lily pads down here? Yeah. Their surface is hydrophobic. Do you know what that means? Yeah. It means it repels water. And the Aboriginal ladies used to line their dilly bags with these lily pads and they could actually transport water. Huh. Ready? Watch this. Does it work? Whoa! See? What the water's just the... running off it. That's cool. Let's get that that's bit like... closer. Hang on. That's like an alien thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so there you go. If you want to create a, uh, a waterproof dilly bag, line it with a lily pad. <laughs> yeah, it works. Yep. Loads of birds out there, hey? You guys see all the heron and all the water birds out there? Yeah? <laughs> I think the kids are over it. Good morning. So this is actually our last full day in Darwin. That meal out that we had last night was it was really good fun actually. Real lovely family. So today we're gonna head back into uh, Darwin City. We're gonna do the Aviation and World War II Museum. Try and give the kids a little bit of history. Uh, and other than that, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a, a subdued day, I think. Just start to get get ready and pack up for uh, 
heading off tomorrow. Um, oh, actually, our water pump failed. So, good thing that it failed in a city when I can get spare parts and try and fix that today. Uh, I don't think it's the actual pump because every now and then it runs, so it's not seized, but there must be some sort of uh, pressure sensing diaphragm in there, and I think that's what it is. Because every now and then, uh, it'll just stop and then it'll start again and then it'll start by itself so i'm not entirely sure what the deal is with that but a store in town called rtm road traffic marine they got a bunch of um no sorry it's road tech marine they got a bunch of spare parts and pumps and all that sort of stuff so i'm going to pull this one apart see if i can find the uh the offending part if not i'll just replace the whole thing anyway other than that I'm going to get back to enjoy my morning milk. We're just having a quiet morning around what camp, catching up on a few things, and Cam suddenly says, oh, there's a lizard under the mat. So I was like, oh, okay, Hi. yep. <laughs> wasn't really paying attention. I thought it might have been one of those little ones that were scurrying around. So I said, well, he's going to get squashed if he's under the mat. And Cam's like, that's okay. I can save him, and look at what he's dragged out from underneath the mat here. Goodness me. Maybe come, oh. You're in the sun there, Dylan. I don't know if he's going to show up real well. Look at the size of this guy. Seriously, lucky we didn't step on you, buddy. You would have given us all a fright, hey? <laughs> he's just chilling now, hey? Huh. Which is well, weird. you saved his life from, you know, being squashed. Sitting under the mat's not a good idea. He's massive, Kim. Look at his long tail. Yeah, he's massive. Wow. Huh. Very cool. Well done, Cam. Well done for saving him. <laughs> All right, well, time got away from us a little bit today, actually, because I was... What did you call me, Jacqueline? Mr... Mr. Fixer a gadget Yeah, <laughs> Jacqueline calls me Mr. Fixer a gadget I had a bunch of stuff I needed to repair. And Miranda got... No, um, yep. Miranda got, um, I had to go shopping and do the washing and clean the car out and all that sort of stuff. And we left it quite late. We wanted to go to the aviation and war museum, uh, but it shuts at four o'clock and it's 3.30 and you've got to pay to get in. So we decided to come to the art museum and they've got a display on Cyclone Tracy as well. So, and it's free to get in. So, so that's why we decided to come to this one. We've only got half an hour before it shuts. Day 1974. Merry Christmas. This is what my nan's TV used to look like. And in fact, this is what my TV used to look like when I was your age. It's not Nana a very Granda, good. Nana and Granddad would tell you like that. It's not a very good TV. That's quite a modern phone though. 
I forgot the push buttons. Push buttons. Our phone had the rotary dial. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yes. The velvet couch. Love it. Hey guys, here's the phone that we used to have. Is that hard to use? It's exactly the same colour as well. What? <laughs> Real? Yeah. Sunset over the um, over the Darwin Harbour. There, uh, there's the ski club back there. It's members. It's a members club, but you can be like visiting member, I suppose. Um, yeah, it overlooks Fanny Bay, Darwin Ski Club, I think it is. Uh, so we're going to go there for dinner, but we've got a couple of hours to burn before sunset. So I was just uh, having a little look on Google Maps, and only five minutes from the museum's a uh, a mangrove boardwalk so that's going to be pretty pretty cool for the kids to go wandering through the uh the mangroves in the comfort of a boardwalk so we'll burn a little bit of time there and then head back to the club for a bite to eat in the sunset Sounds good. well we might have a new contender for dinner on the way up to this mangrove walk it is a really beautiful drive along the um along the water line there we came across another club, uh, Darwin Trailer Boat Club. Anyway, we'll probably end up going to that one because it looked really nice. That's so cool, man. I love mangroves. It's low tide at the moment. Um, we were just on the foreshore before, sitting down on the grass after the museum and the, the tide's way out, but... Mangroves are so cool. Do you like them? Mm-hmm. Huh. Oh, check them out. Look at that one big claw. Is that a logodile or a crocodile out there? No, that's what I just saw. Not no. I don't think I could zoom in far enough on my phone. I think it's a logodile. Hey? It might just be a rockodile. Or a weedodile. We could see something out in the water there. It's uh, everywhere you go on the top end, before you enter any of these walks, it always says be croc aware and there's crocs in the area. And, Danger one. signs everywhere, so you're constantly looking, but it looks like there's, know, there's something out there. I think they're just rocks though. It's one thing that always amazes me, these northern tides, they move so quick. We've been here, what, five minutes? Mm. And you can actually see the tide coming in. As before, or when we got here, the tide was, sorry for my finger, was out about there somewhere. And it's just starting to motor in now. And we're also wondering, this line running through here out to the water where there's no uh, mangrove snorkels and we're thinking oh, that's a bit odd the mangroves wonder what that's that all about spot? and then someone had the idea of maybe that's a crocodile slide when they get back out to the water from the mangroves mm. it's a good theory <laughs> it's possibly what it is yeah it's cool yeah look at that it's just still moving up hey yeah it's coming, it's coming quick, quick. That mangrove boardwalk was, was really good until Cameron fell off the boardwalk. <laughs> How you feeling buddy? Sore. How's the leg? Sore. Sore. Yeah, bet it would. Bet it would be. Oh. You know what to make it better? Burger and chips. And a nice cold drink. At the boat club. Darwin Trailer Boat Club. It looks really nice here, doesn't it? It's popular. Yeah. Oh, 
what a spot to have your sunset dinner at. Well, it's a sailing club there and a trailer boat club here. Oh, got a choice to make. The trailer boat club or the sailing club? The sport for choice down here at Fanny Bay does the sailing yacht club or the trailer boat club. We decided not to venture outside of our class though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you don't mind, I think we'll enjoy our dinner here. <laughs> wow, Darwin's turning on a pretty epic sunset for us. Look at this place. This is beautiful. Cheers. Cheers. This place has got everything. Good food, cold beer, amazing sunset, and there's a bunch of sharks out there swimming around causing a fuss as well. Causing a big fuss. This is our last night in Darwin. We're packing up and heading on to another campsite. Had a really good time, haven't we? Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Anything to say? Like to try. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you in the next one. <laughs>